HQ universe and welcome to HQ Words. It's time for HQ Words. We are live from uh, uh, New Anna, York City. And actually, uh, sorry, Surprise. I know we're sort of in your time slot here, but we got to do trivia yeah, before hey, we get to you. I got a word for you. Snafu. Oh, oh, oh that's harsh. Snap. All right, Anna. Yeah, yeah, just, what? Oh, man. Sorry. Sorry. Hi. Hey. Anna Royceman, everybody, HQ Words, will be following HQ Trivia, not at the regular time slot tonight, a little jumbled up, I think that juggler uh, juggled up our questions, is maybe what happened, or uh, that virus that's infecting Facebook and Instagram is a little more contagious than we thought. Nevertheless, we're back, baby, at our new time, 9.40, no, no, usually we're 9 o'clock, but we're a little late tonight. And I'm going to hit you with it. HQ100, we're doing it again. We got the right questions lined up. Sorry for you AP chemistry grads out there who were so excited about that Q1. If you did get that question right, you will get an extra life. Manana. And if you uh, got it wrong, or if you, if you used an extra life you know, inadvertently, we'll also refund you an extra life. So don't worry about that. We're going to take care of you like we always do here in HQ. And I'm going to take care of all of you right now. It's the HQ100 $5,000 prize. Guaranteed $50 or more going to the winners this evening. I'm not going to stop asking questions until there are 100 or a few of you left in the game. And I got Cumero Numero Uno lined up, the correct one. This is more like it. Are you ready, folks? Let's get back down to the nitty-gritty and get this show on the road once again. Q1. Which of these terms commonly describes appliances? Covered in spiders, chocolate dip, or stainless steel? Ah... That's the Q1 we know and love. They're the original apps, appliances, and then appetizers, and then HQ came along. Uh, Choco dip spiders. No, it's stainless steel. Come on. Come on. You got to make sure that steel don't rust on you. 292,191. You stand the stainless, and you're getting Q2 tonight. Think about this. If you got that nitrogen question right, like, you would have gotten that one right too, I hope, okay? Q2, which piece of jewelry is typically worn lowest on the body? Brooch, tiara, or anklet? These hit their peak in ancient Egypt and have been worn for centuries by girls and women in India. They've had their moments in the 20th century here in the US. I'm talking about anklets, ankle bracelets. They're like chokers for your feet. And they're back! In 2019, I think, according to an article I read in Bustle, 288,604, taking those feet and uh, walking on to uh, Q3. Yeah. Which planet is closest to the sun? Neptune, Mercury, or Uranus? You guys all know that mnemonic device. Manhattan's Vance ensuring Manafort jail time sounds utterly noble. That's the order of planets outwards from the sun, first being Mercury? The water star is singing its silver melody. The rivers run deep. 264,974. Your day is longer than your year. Just like on Mercury. Ooh, like liquid Mercury, you're slithering onto Q4. A jurist doctor is a professional degree generally obtained to practice what? Anthropology, computer science, or law? Does Mercury slither? It slimes along its, I don't know, you know, pools. Imagine if Salinger didn't become an author and instead followed my family's career path. He'd be a JDJD. Of course, that would have meant he, uh, like my father, mother, two uncles, and grandfather, would have had graduated from law school. Lawyer up! 224,004 of you all are all right tonight because you got a degree. I'm the first person in my family not to go to law school, basically. Juris doctor. The doctors are in Q5. In which of these novels does a conch shell play a key role? Robinson Crusoe, Lord of the Flies, or The Beach? Gotta respect the conch. Hold an empty shell to your ear and you can hear the ocean. Hold a live one to your ear and you'll get an earful of snail guts. <laughs> if you're stranded on a deserted island with British schoolboys, conchs can be used to create democracy. Lord of the Flies we're talking about. William Golding, 159,059 are golden after Q5. Kill the beast! Spill this blood! We're spilling 60,000 of you there at Q5. Q6, the first televised debate featuring U.S. presidential candidates included whom? Nixon and Kennedy, Clinton and Bush, or Roosevelt and Hoover? These days it seems everyone and their Buddha judge is on TV talking the points, bait and debate. But back in 1960, it was quite novel to see JFK and Tricky Dick go at it on the boob tube. The candidates need no introduction. 
the Republican candidate, Vice President Richard M. Nixon, and the Democratic candidate, Senator John F. Kennedy. Everything's coming up. Richard Milhouse Nixon and John F. Kennedy, of course. 140,554 for you. Your high noon is in the future. And Q7 is, is in your immediate future because it's the question that you're going to get right now. Which carbohydrate is commonly found in biryani, bread, rice, or noodles? While the exact history of this South Asian dish is unknown, it could have been the handiwork of army troops, maybe created by the Mughal emperors. Two things are for sure. It's got a lot of rice. Rice, baby. And it tastes very nice. Nice, baby. I love a good lamb biryani. 106,898. Putting that raita on Q7, a little mango chutney. Mmm, that's a delicious question. Q8, which musical artist's birth name is Quentin Leo Cook, Fatboy Slim, Skrillex, or Bob Dylan? Remember, it's the HQ100 tonight, we're at Q8. We don't know how far this is gonna go. We could be asking 100 questions if it takes that long. Hey, born Quentin Leo, this English DJ adopted the name Norman. Yeah. Talk about Normcore for his first solo hit, Blame It on the Baseline in 1989, before finding even greater success under a more familiar moniker. Perhaps you know him better as Fat Boy Slim. Right about now. Funk Soul Brother, check it out now. Funk Soul Brother. I have to celebrate 61,410 of you. I have to praise you like I should. I have to praise you. Q9. Which of these tech founders has a verified Twitter account? Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Wozniak, or Sergey Brin? Shit. <laughs> My favorite part of that song. Uh, these guys aren't pulling an Elon Musk and tweeting out their every stone thought, freaking out shareholders. No, Zuck tweeted precisely 11 times upon signing up in 2009 and then once more in 2012 about net neutrality. Brin doesn't tweet at all, but Steve Wozniak, the Woz gets busy. Apple co-founder, he's constantly sharing his location on there. It's a little weird. Ooh, we have our first legitimate savage question of the evening. I believe we do. Truly, madly, deeply entering the savage garden at Q9. We're down to 22,161. We're still a ways away from 100 or fewer, which is where we need to go tonight. Q10. Which of these states contains the capital with the highest altitude? New Mexico, Colorado, or North Carolina? There's a swing in town I know called Capital City. Look, it's Tony Bennett. Hey, good to see you. The capital city with the highest altitude is Santa Fe, over 7,000 feet. And that Santa only visits the children of New Mexico, of course. Capital City, my home sweet, yeah! 13,336, getting this brutal question here. We did lose 20,000 of you there. Not quite savage on the savageometer. Savageometer, savageometer? Q11, according to the lyrics, what does Sia do to prepare for her night out in cheap thrills? Pick out a dress, find a date, or paint her nails. I love cheap thrills. Sia ain't got no cash, she don't need it. To have fun tonight, to have fun tonight. But she's still got to get a mani in of her own making, of course. I paint my nails, put my high heels on. It's Saturday and I won't be long till I hit the guns fly. I love cheap thrills. And I love painting her nails. 12861 love that answer. You guys could possibly afford some expensive thrills if you win HQ tonight. Come on, come on, turn Q12 on. This is it, Q12, not the final question tonight. Which of these is not a direct quotation from Shakespeare? All the world's a stage, I burn, I pine, I perish, or to gild the lily. Act two, scene seven, line 138 of As You Like It is where you will find all the world's a stage, verbatim. Lucentio tames Tranio's shrew with I burn, I pine, I perish. That's from Shakespeare, yeah. Taming the Shrew. But King John is where you're going to find the quote, to gild refined gold, to paint the lily. We've actually condensed that in the intervening centuries, to gild the lily. And that is the answer. 4,594 could be gilding their 
bank accounts tonight with a little extra moolah if you win the HQ100, $5,000 waiting for you. Q13, which Nancy Myers film mainly takes place in Brooklyn? The Intern, It's Complicated or Something's Gotta Give. Once you peel back the layers of tasteful cashmere and beautiful kitchens full of stainless steel appliances, you'll notice some slight differences in Nancy Myers' oeuvre. For example, The Intern, that takes place in trendy Brooklyn. Yeah, Robert De Niro interning for Anne Hathaway. Don't run. Walk to see that one. 3,717. It's actually not that bad. Eh, I saw it. It's not that bad. You got that one right, baby. And you're getting Q14. Which of these alphabets contains the most letters? Russian, Spanish, or Greek? Do you know your ABCs? What about your ABCs? Your alpha, beta, gammas? The Greek alphabet has 24 letters. And the Spanish, 27. They got an extra ñ. But the Russian alphabet tops them both with 33. I'm talking Cyrillic. Cyrillic alphabet here, 2,201. No collusion. No collusion. 775. It's all Greek to you, I guess. Ugh. You're getting Q15 right now. 15 for the 2,000 plus in this game. Which of these living U.S. vice presidents is the youngest? Dan Quayle, Al Gore, or Joe Biden? It's a good thing for Dan Quayle that he wasn't beep during the age of social media. Hashtag potato might have overtaken Kafifi. DQ was born in February 47. Jolton Joe Biden, he's a bona fide war baby, born in 42. But the inconvenient truth about this question is that Al Gore is the youngest born. March 48, and we got 1,688 of you still standing. I'm still standing. You're standing at Q16 tonight, the HQ100. There's a chance on a super savage question. We could find it right here. Let's see. The actress who played a live action Cindy Lou Who went on to act in which teen drama? The OC, Pretty Little Liars, or Gossip Girl? Ooh, she started out as a who, but grew up to be a who dad. As a child actor, Taylor Momsen had a breakout role in 2000's How the Goose Stole Christmas. And then as a teenager, she made waves portraying Queen J, Jenny Humphrey, in Gossip Girl for a few seasons there. Ooh, 1216, XOXO. You love this question. The rest of you, get on your keister, Leighton Meester. You're out of the quiz. You came so close. But we got 1216 in this for Q17. This question's rated NC17. According to Major League Baseball rules, team uniforms are not allowed to depict what? A wooden bat, a baseball, or bases? Hmm. Baseball season's around the corner. Spring training is heating up. A lot of teams have gotten around this rule by partially obscuring the offending item, but officially no design is allowed to depict a baseball on the uniform. It could be distracting, confusing to the other team. And 411, 411, you want some information? I'm giving it to you. What's the 411? You're getting Q18. You're so close to $5,000. We could have it right here. This could be the question that decides the HQ100 on this Wednesday evening. Did I tell you it's, it's Wednesday, my dudes? I did. Q18. Which of these Great Lakes is bordered by the fewest U.S. states, Superior, Erie, or Huron? Arr, I'm married to the sea, and I'm seeing two of the Great Lakes on the side. I won't say which ones, but it's Erie, how superior they are. Erie touches four states, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Michigan. Superior shares a shore with three. Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. But Huron touches only Michigan, consensually, of course. And we're down to 124. Huron, oh boy. Ooh, we got some superior H cuties in this game tonight. They've gotten through 18 questions. Lake H. Huron, we're in this right now at Q19. Methinks we're going to find the HQ100 with this question. Hey, 19, hey. Richard Attenborough repeats which of these lines in Jurassic Park? No cost is too high, spared no expense, or you get what you pay for. This could be it, folks. The HQ100 could be decided right here. 24 of you need to get this wrong. Do you know the late, great Richard Attenborough? Of course you do. He played John Hammond, the owner of an island off the coast of Costa Rica, who spent five years setting up a kind of bi biological preserve. Really spectacular. Spent no expense.
spared no expense. Spectacular design. Spared no expense. And he spared no expense. Dear boy, relax. Try to enjoy yourself. All 87 of you, welcome to Jurassic Park. Welcome to the winner circle. You won the HQ 100, baby! Eighty-seven. Eighty-seven winners tonight. Splitting five thousand dollars. That's fifty-seven forty-seven. A nice odd number giving you a nice odd piece of change there. Some of you got fifty-seven forty-eight. Congratulations, all of you, you did it! Nineteen questions, you got through them all. Port Cullis, old dirty Steve, gay aliens, okay. Sure, you're welcome here. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Lady Green, Marth, Shookies. You're probably shook right now that you won 57 bucks on your Wednesday night. Hannah, you won some money. BK Southern, you won some good money. Congratulations, one and all. You did it. You got through it. You stuck with us through those technical difficulties. Thank you so much. It was worth it, wasn't it? Staying up a little later on this Wednesday. And if you can, stay up even later still for Anna Roisman. Oh, of course, Danny DeVito tomorrow. Well, get some sleep tonight. And then... And then uh, play with me. And Danny DeVito tomorrow, 3 p.m. Anna Royceman's coming up. You saw her earlier. She'll be here. Right? Not 9.30, but, yeah, you know, soon. And uh, tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, Bookworm Trivia presented by Audible. We're getting lit. It's so litty tomorrow, 9 p.m. Special quiz. Doing a whole new thing. You can't miss it. Oh, boy. What a night. We got through it. Until I see you tomorrow, I've been Scott Rogowski. You've been so patient. Thanks for playing with me. And until I see you again, remember... Take care of yourself and each other. Bye.